exact what was going to happen. There is a disease. There is a wave of an attack that is coming attack the whole world. There is a healing spirit that Jehovah is releasing in the body of Christ to stop this plague. The Spirit of God came upon me and I explained to them exact what was going to happen. There is a disease. There is a wave of an attack that is coming to attack the whole world. There is a healing spirit that Jehovah is releasing in the body of Christ to stop this plague. The Spirit of God came upon me and I explained to them exact what was going to happen. There is a disease. There is a wave of an attack that is coming to attack the whole world. There is a healing spirit that Jehovah is releasing in the body of Christ to stop this plague. The Spirit of God came upon me and I explained to them exact what was going to happen. There is a disease. There is a wave of an attack that is coming to attack the whole world. There is a healing spirit that Jehovah is releasing in the body of Christ to stop this plague. The spirit of now Eshima ibana nasifa zote bana mungu umetukuka 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 ume Tukuka hewe mungu umetukoka. God came upon me and I explained to them exact what was going to happen. There is a disease. There is a wave of an attack that is coming to attack the whole world. There is a healing spirit that Jehovah is releasing in the body of Christ to stop this plague. The Spirit of God came upon me and I explained to them exact what was going to happen. There is a disease. There is a wave of an attack that is coming to attack the whole world. There is a healing spirit that Jehovah is releasing in the body of Christ to stop this plague. The spirit of
bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I take this opportunity to welcome all of you for this service. We believe Jesus Christ has become your strength. He has become your power. I want us to take a short time of sharing the word of God. Remember, the Bible says in the book of John chapter 6, John chapter 6, and verse 63. And this is the reason why we speak the word of life to you every day. Because Jesus said in John chapter 6 and verse 63, it says, It is the spirit that quickens. To quicken is to make a life or to give life. John 6, 63. It says it is the spirit that quickens. The flesh provides nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are a spirit and they are a life. So there where you are listening to this teaching, don't just listen, but open up your heart because the words of Jesus are a spirit and the words of Jesus are a life. Again, we are taught by the Bible in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It says, So then faith cometh by hearing and the hearing by the word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It says, So then faith comes by hearing and the hearing by the word of God. So as you listen to God's word, the spirit of life, the spirit of faith is going to have room in your life and you will be able to please God in your walk with him. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, I want to continue sharing on the power of the name of Jesus. The power of the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is not an empty name. He received that name by inheritance. Remember, you cannot receive inheritance from your brother or from your uncle. You can only receive inheritance from your father. So Hebrews chapter 1, we see where Jesus received his name from. You know, I want to be simple because Revelation is what will bring power and life in your heart. So we are taught by the scriptures, Hebrews chapter 1, verse, let me begin from verse, verse 1. I'm targeting verse, verse 4. The Bible says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in time past, and to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Verse 4, I skip verse 3. It says, Being made so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance, please check that scripture very well. He says, he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Who are these they? These are angels. So I know that angels have names. There is an angel in heaven called Gabriel. Another one is called Michael. Now, those are angelic names, but there is no name that can be compared 
with the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because he obtained that name by inheritance. The scripture says, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name. This is a name that imparts excellence in your spirit, in your soul, and in your life. So the name was inherited. And so that is why I believe that the name of God the Father is Jesus. And I also believe the name of the Holy Spirit is also Jesus. Because as a father, he had to give this name to his son. So Jesus has obtained a powerful eternal name that carries all that God is and all that God has. So I want you from this day to begin to apply this name in everything that you do because Jesus obtained the name and then he gave the name to us. That is why the name was handed over to us to use it. So the scripture says in Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, this is how this name relates with resurrection. After resurrection, you are supposed to apply this name by faith in everything you do. Because in it, there is authority. There is dominion. There is power in this name. And so, as a church on the, on the face of the earth today, we need to go back to the to that is to what makes things happen in our lives. Philippians chapter 2. How did he receive this name? The word of God says, and before I read, listen, when Jesus was born, the name was given to him all the way from heaven by an angel called Gabriel. Mary was told, you will conceive and you shall bring forth a son, and his name shall be called Jesus. Yes, he was named Jesus after birth. But he inherited the name after resurrection. Now, this is something that is hidden in the Bible. You need to be careful. You need to be a keen student of the scriptures to know that this name became powerful after resurrection. Why am I saying this? Because of Philippians chapter 2. The scripture says, verse 5, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, Thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. You see, the scripture confirms that he humbled himself until he died a shameful death on the cross. Now, after he died on the cross, he went to the grave. He was buried. And then, when God came to raise him from the dead, that is the time he handed over this name to him that he may hand it over to us as the church. Verse 9, Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him. You see, Jesus was exalted after resurrection. The Bible says he was lifted from the grave 
And now he seated on the right hand of God in heaven, exalted. Now, that word exalted there, I want you to take it seriously. It is there in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 verse 32. It says, this Jesus has God raised up. Whereof we are all witness. Verse 33, therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted. Jesus was exalted by his father after resurrection. And as received of the father, the promise of the Holy Ghost, the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed for this which you now see and hear. So he was first exalted and then he was given a name. He inherited the name from his father. That is why, as I was discussing last week in the other, in the other programs, that the name of Jesus was not used by the apostles to ask for anything until resurrection. I heard somebody arguing that that name was being used by the apostles, but the, the truth is in the scriptures, they were not able to use the name to ask for anything because Jesus was with them physically. They could not use it. And it is confirmed here in the Bible, in John chapter 16, John chapter 16, they were not using this name. Verse 23, John 16. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Jesus is speaking what will be happening after resurrection. In that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. We, we are supposed to use the name of Jesus now, directly addressing the Father, even without, without involving Jesus. That is where many questions arise in the doctrine of the name. Because of verse 23, it says, And in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Yes, we are not supposed to ask Jesus anything. He has already given you the name to use to reach the Father. Now, after resurrection, the name has been handed over to us. Use the name to cast out devils. Use the name to heal the sick. Use the name to demand anything directly from your father. That is why the name has been given to us. Verse 4, 24, John 16. He says, either to, have you asked me, asked nothing in my name? Even Jesus is confirming to them that when the apostles were with him in the body, before he went on the cross, before he was buried, before he rose again, they never asked anything using the name of Jesus. Verse 24, either to have you asked nothing in my name. Then he says, now ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. So that is why... <laughs> There are many things that we do in the body of Christ now which are wrong. For example, we are not supposed to worship the Holy Spirit. He empowers us to worship God. You know, these things are there. And because we don't read the Bible, we come up with the teachings and the doctrines that that hinder the flow of the power of God into our lives. After resurrection, use the name 
go directly to your father and the demand what you want to demand from him. You know, when I use the word demand, many people say, so pastor, you can command God. Yes, the word ask in the Bible does not mean begging. It means you demand as one having authority. You demand. And that is why you can command you can command God to do anything that is in the world. You know, I was preaching in a church, <laughs> uh, AIC church. And when I said that we can command God, I was almost chased away from the church. But it is here. In the book of Isaiah chapter 45, you are supposed to demand whatever you want after resurrection using the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 11. I want to change levels of your power, levels of authority and the way you approach God because Jesus is no longer in the grave. Verse 11, Isaiah 45. The Bible says, that says the Lord. That says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his maker. He says, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands, command you me. There is no way you can say no to the word that is written. Jesus himself said, scriptures can never be broken. We have been given the name to demand, not to beg. That is why, the reason why people are dying in hospitals, that is, even in our homes, when we pray for them to be healed, it is because the approach is wrong. The approach is wrong. There is nowhere in the Bible we are told to pray for the sick. You see, we are commanded to, we are not to just pray for the sick, no. The Bible says you heal them. Use the name of Jesus and force the disease to go. Force the powers of the enemy to leave. You are supposed to break demonic powers, sicknesses, diseases, Using the power that is available in your hand. And that is the name of the Lord Jesus. I know because there are uh, some of the people listening to me, they are still young in the faith. So let me clarify something on praying for the sick. There is nowhere in the Bible where Jesus prayed for sick people. There is nothing like that in the Bible. He forced his sicknesses to go. Even now, when you tell God, Oh God, heal me. Oh God, heal me. God cannot heal you because he healed you 2,000 years ago. What you are supposed to do is to command the disease to go using the name of Jesus. It will obey. But now if you go to God, oh God, I ask you, take away this sickness. Take away this sickness. There is no way God can take away the sickness from your body because he took it many years ago. When you feel it in your body, use the name of Jesus and force it to leave your body. You command it to God because God will not do what he did 2,000 years ago. Force it using the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Let me help somebody there in Matthew chapter 8 just to confirm to you Jesus healed you so you are supposed to use the name of Jesus you force the sickness that comes in your body. In Matthew 18 the Bible says in verse 16 when the evening was come, 
they brought unto him men that were possessed with the devils, and they cast out the spirits with his word, and they healed all that were sick. Why were they healed, all of them, verse 17? That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took, that is past tense. He says, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. So you are not sick now that God may heal you now. You are supposed to use the power that is in the name of Jesus and you force that sickness to go away. To confirm to God that he took it many, many years ago. So where is the source of our authority? The source of our authority is to know that this name was handed over to the church after resurrection. We go back to our scripture, if, uh, Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2. This name was given to you as a believer to use it. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. The Bible says, Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Now, we know when he was born, he was given the name Jesus. We know he was called Jesus. But now after resurrection, the name is given again. So use the name of Jesus with the revelation of resurrection. He has been exhorted. He has been exhorted now. And he has been given a name which is above every name. I wish all the believers in the world knew this by revelation. The name of Jesus was there when he was born. He was given the name. The name was never used when he was alive in the body. This name was used after resurrection. So, forget about what happened before, but begin to carry the revelation of the name being handed over to you after resurrection. I repeat verse 9. Wherefore, God also has highly exhorted him and given him a name after exhortation. After he set him on his right hand of God in heaven. That is when he was given this name that is above every name. Verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, this is the name, so powerful, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and the things in earth and the things under the earth. So the name of Jesus controls Three worlds. It controls the heavenlies. It controls the earthly realm. It also controls the underworld. So before Jesus uh, rose from the dead, that name could not work for, that is, it could not affect three dimensions of the world. But now it can. Let me help somebody who wants to, to know the difference. The difference is here. In Matthew 28, Matthew 28, verse 18, this is after resurrection. Jesus says, And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He had to state it because before resurrection, he had the power on earth only. You remember he healed a man with the leprosy in Mark chapter 2. He said that you may know 
that the Son of Man has power on earth before resurrection. Before resurrection, Jesus had power on earth only. But after resurrection, he has the power over the heavens and the power of the earth. So the name of Jesus that we have now, it can control the heavens. That is why we can deal with the principalities, with the powers, with the rulers of darkness. We can deal with the invisible powers in the kingdom of darkness. Because the name now can affect three different worlds. <laughs> I repeat verse 10, then I pray. He says that at the name, that is Philippians 2.10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Where? Of things in heaven and the things in earth and the things under the earth. Verse 11, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Listen. To the glory of God the Father. Why is the glory going to the Father? Because he's the one who gave him the name as the inheritance. That is what has been missing in the body of Christ. I have read so many books about the name of Jesus. I thank God for a great man of God who has already gone to be with the Lord. Kennedy Hagin. I've read that book. Some of the things I'm teaching here, they are not there. I have read a powerful book written by a great man of God, E.W. Kenyon, about the name of Jesus. These things are not there. God opened my eyes to see that the name was inherited from the Father. And this is after resurrection. That is where our power is hidden. Glory to God. Wherever you are, I'm going to give you just one minute. And thank God for this name that has been given to us in Jesus' name. Wherever you are, maybe you are in your house, you are in your office, you are in your car. Wherever you are hearing this teaching from, just open your mouth. Thank the Father. Because of handing over his name to his son. Then his son has handed over the name to the church, to the believer. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name, Jesus. There is no one who is like unto thee, Lord. You have given us a name that controls the heavens. The name that controls the earthly realms. The name that controls the, the underworld. There is no power under the earth that cannot bow to the name of Jesus. There is no power on the face of the earth that cannot bow to the name of the Lord. There is no power in the heavenlies that cannot bow to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, glory. Hallelujah, glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hakuna munguka mawewe. Hakuna kamawe. Hakuna mungu kama wewe Hakuna mungu kama wewe Hakuna jina kama lako Hakuna kama lako Hakuna Jina kama lako hakuna 
Jina kama lako Jina kama lako Hakuna kama lako Hakuna jina kama lako in the name of Jesus thank you for the revelations that you are releasing into our hearts by your word and by your spirit let this name become a powerful tool in the hands of your believers of your children on the face of the earth wherever they are now whatever is not from you in their lives we stop it in the name of Jesus let diseases let demonic powers be broken by this name and let all the glory and honor return back to you in Jesus name amen and amen for those who are not born again and you say, man of God, I want to give my life to Jesus. It's very simple. Salvation came after resurrection. There was no salvation before that. Because of Romans chapter 10 verse 9, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. There was no salvation before resurrection. So confess this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I accept that I'm a sinner and I have no power to save myself. But I believe you died on the cross for me. You shed your blood for the remission of my sins. I ask you that you forgive me today. Wash me clean with your precious blood. Write my name in the book of life. I confess with my mouth the belief of my heart that you, Jesus, you are the Christ. You are the Lord. And by faith, I receive you into my heart. And now I know I am forgiven. I am born again. Amen. Those who have prayed that prayer, Jesus has become your Lord and has become your master. Again, we are going to have a, an opportunity of honoring God with our offerings. The scripture tells me in the book of Philippians chapter 4, you know, every time the word of God is spoken, it offers an opportunity for us to serve the Lord. Philippians chapter 4 verse 10. The Bible says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, now that now at the last your care of me has flourished again, wherein you are careful, but you lacked opportunity. Now opportunity is here for you to honor God with your tithes, with your fast fruits, with whatever gift the Lord is going to lay in your heart. Our church till number is there before you. You go to your M-Pesa, then Lipa and M-Pesa, then you put the till number, 84, 16, 90. And the blessing of the kingdom will never depart from your life. Bless and Lord, thank you for your servants who are honoring you this morning with their givings. Let your strong and mighty hand never depart from their families and from the work of their hands. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you. We will be again live exact at 1.30. The Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Hakuna 
Mungu kama wewe Hakuna kama wewe Hakuna Mungu kama wewe Hakuna Mungu kama wewe Hakuna Jina kama lako Hakuna Kama lako Hakuna Jina kama lako Hakuna Jina kama lako Hakuna Nguvu kama zaku Hakuna kama zaku Hakuna nguvu kama zaku Hakuna nguvu kama zaku